Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. It has been a minute since an open AI model was where we were focused. For the last couple weeks, everything has been about Llama 3. In fact, as we've discussed on this show, even the small models of Llama 3 that have been released so far come sufficiently close to GPT-4 level performance that it's made people think very differently about the competitive landscape of LLMs. We're getting serious questions around whether, if open source keeps being this close to the state of the art, does it fundamentally change the economics of advanced models? Will people just all opt to build on top of Llama 6 instead of paying a premium for GPT-6? Anyways, the point is that Zuckerberg has been once again dominating the conversation, but apparently OpenAI was sick of that. Because for the last day or so, everyone has been talking about a model called GPT-2 Chatbot, which is rumored to secretly be GPT-4.5 or even GPT-5 out in the wild in advance of an official launch. So where was this model found? Well, it was on the Limsys Chatbot Arena. This is an LLM benchmarking site, and it appeared as one of the model options which people on the site could test. As Dan Shipper from Every put it, Limsys.org enables users to chat with various LLMs and rate their output according to different benchmarks without needing to log in. One of the models recently available is GPT-2 Chatbot. There is no information to be found on that particular model name anywhere on the site or elsewhere. The ratings results generated by Limsys benchmarks are available via their API for all models except for this one. The model name simply appears to be a cover for something else entirely. Yesterday afternoon, Professor Ethan Malik wrote, There is a mysterious new model called GPT-4 Chatbot accessible from a major LLM benchmarking site. No one knows who made it or what it is, but I've been playing with it a little and it appears to be in the same rough ability level as GPT-4. A mysterious GPT-4 class model? Neat! One additional thing that Ethan noted was that anonymous testing is a service that Limsys.org offers. This came out after Simon Willison responded to Ethan and said, Feels to me like a bit of a reputation risk to Limsys if this is indeed a stealth model launch. There's supposed to be a neutral benchmarking tool, which is not a great look if they're working behind the scenes with model vendors in an opaque manner like this. Limsys.org responded to Simon saying, Just to clarify following our policy, we've partnered with several model developers to bring their new models to our platform for community preview testing. These models are strictly for testing and won't be listed on the leaderboard until they go public. In other words, this is a thing that they do. Now, of course, it wasn't just the fact that this had a GPT name, but the fact that it appeared really good that got people talking. EverArt founder Pietro Shirano wrote, A mysterious new model called GPT-2 Chatbot has appeared on Limsys and it's really good. Not only does it show incredible reasoning, but it also gets notoriously challenging AI questions right with a much more impressive tone. The example that he shared was a question, What weighs more, a kilo of feathers or a kilo of lead? This is a historically difficult problem for LLMs, but GPT-2 Chatbot says, A kilogram of feathers and a kilogram of lead weigh the same. They both weigh one kilogram. The key difference between the two is in their volume and density. A kilogram of feathers will take up much more space and appear much larger, while the kilogram of lead will be compact and small. This often leads to the classic trick question, but in terms of weight, a kilo is a kilo. It also apparently is good at math. Andrew Gao writes, A GBT2 chatbot just solved an international math Olympiad problem in one shot. This, in my opinion, is insanely hard. Only the four best math students in the U.S. get to compete. CodeGen founding engineer Chase writes, can confirm GPT-2 chatbot is definitely better at complex code manipulation tasks than Claude Opus or the latest GPT-4. Did better on all the coding prompts we used to test new models. The vibes are deaf there. The model is also apparently good at code art. Phil on Twitter writes, GPT-2 chatbot is insane at ASCII art, miles ahead of any other model. With Llama 370B, when asked to create an ASCII art unicorn, the output is very janky. Whereas with GPT-2 chatbot, it completely nails it. Cool Zippity on Twitter also asked about art, saying, I asked GPT-2 chatbot to generate a simple program for turning doodles into art. Every other model I've tested fails at this. They get a doodle function, but the button does nothing of artistic value. The version that he shares does a much better job. So what are the theories for what this model could actually be? Brian Romley writes, I've been testing GPT-2 chatbot for a few days. Today, it seems to have gotten much more attention. It surpassed all of our ChatGPT-4 benchmarks. Hypothesis, a few of us concluded it is a form of pre-lobotomized ChatGPT-4 or heavily trained on it. Runway CEO Siki Chan writes, My best guess? GPT-4 knowledge plus Q-star search reasoning equals GPT-2. General knowledge seems near identical to GPT-4 with much better reasoning and planning capabilities. More expensive inference from tree of thought search would explain relatively slow inference and low rate limit. If true, this is a much bigger deal than it seems. GPT-2 is likely to feel pretty similar for most general knowledge queries, but will outperform on reasoning. 
So I don't think it's an accident that this isn't named GPT-4.5 or GPT-5. It is neither. It's a test bed for Q-Star, or whatever you want to call Tree of Thought plus PRM these days. Q-Star, you'll remember, was a rumored OpenAI reasoning model that got a lot of attention last year. Continuing, Siki writes, The next GPT-5 will likely continue to ride on the scaling hypothesis plus a reasoning boost from this. Siki also writes, And no, it isn't GPT-2 fine-tuned. You are all out of your mind. The knowledge cutoff alone would make that make zero sense. What he's referring to is that another theory is summed up here by Albs, who writes, My guess is this mysterious GPT-2 chatbot is literally OpenAI's GPT-2 from 2019 fine-tuned with modern assistant datasets, in which case that means their original pre-training is still amazing and better than everyone else's four years later. Admittedly, most people did not agree. Julian Chamon, the CTO of Hugging Face, writes, My personal guess on GPT-2 chatbot, given Omar San Severio, the chief llama officer at Hugging Face, has been off for the last 10 days, at this stage strongly suspect it's a side project of his gone viral. Now this was a little tongue-in-cheek, of course, but just speaks to how little information we actually have. What about what GPT-2 said about its origins? Andrew Gao again writes, It told me and others that it was made by OpenAI. This is a weak signal, though, because of data contamination. A lot of models are trained on OpenAI chats and thus think they were made by OpenAI. When he polled to ask, What do you think? GPT-4.5, GPT-5, Grok2, or another AI company? 58.9% of 2,100 voters said GPT-4.5. And while that reflects the quality that people are seeing, some have pointed out that if this was the jump between 4 and 4.5, they wouldn't be real happy about that either. Matt Schumer from HyperWrite AI says, GPT-2 chatbot is good, really good. But if this is GPT-4.5, I'm disappointed. Flowers from the Future, the frequent OpenAI leaker, writes, GPT-2 isn't better than current GPT-4 Turbo, so it's definitely not 4.5 or 5, and not even 4. Either this is a new GPT-4 Lite model, or it really is a new GPT-2 model with a totally new kind of training or processing. The implications of the latter would be absolutely crazy. Being no help and adding more mystery to the whole thing was Sam Altman, who tweeted, I do have a soft spot for GPT-2. Funny enough, he had initially written it as GPT-2, but then about eight seconds later edited it to, I do have a soft spot for GPT-2, no dash, which of course sent a whole group of people speculating on what that might mean. Ethan Malik again pointed out the frustration of the crypticness of the industry, saying, OpenAI may be one of the most important technology companies in the world today, but they really like to communicate through hints and oracle whispers. What is GPT-2? At this rate, we will only know that GPT-5 is being launched from an I Love Bees-esque alternate reality game. GPT-6 will be known by the shapes made by the wheeling of starlings over Palo Alto, as well as certain signs in the heavens, and the first letters of every third tweet by Rune. Smokeaway writes, GPT-2 is not the AGI you're looking for. And I think ultimately that's where we're going to land on this. This mystery will likely at some point be solved, or it won't and it'll just stay mysterious. But the reason that there's so much attention on it is that for as much as we were talking about last week around how a close to GPT-4 class open source model could change the game, people are still obsessed with the frontier. They are still obsessed with the true state of the art. Right now, it doesn't seem like that's gonna change anytime soon. So for the moment, we're just gonna have to be content with this mystery. Sure, it's speculative, but it's not the least fun I've ever had in the AI space. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.